Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start this lecture with the thought process asking a question is not the end of a thing one can assume it to be a humble beginning if explored honestly without bothering one can definitely have a happy ending <coughs> so in the last lecture we have learnt how to evaluate the burning velocity uh, by making a lot of assumptions and also we will have to evaluate the properties properly otherwise you will land in getting some number which is having not much meaning right uh, but today we will be trying to look at uh, and the flame thickness and uh, rel and also try to relate that to the burning velocity so uh, later on uh, in this lecture we will be looking at how to evaluate the burning velocity experimentally right what are the methods being used generally for evaluating the burning velocity. So, uh, flame thickness uh, if you look at is basically a ratio of the maximum temperature difference to the temperature difference at the inflection point. This uh, basically inflection point you might be knowing that where the slope will be changing right of the temperature profile. For example, if you look at this here this is the temperature profile and we of course, will be approximating as a linear profile for our computation. In actual situation there will be a curvature here kind of things and the inflection point will be somewhere here, where the slope is changing from positive to the negative kind of things. So, um, that uh, we will define as a delta L is the flame thickness, this is your flame thickness, I will take a tangent and then do that. So, that is nothing but T f minus T u uh, divided by T at the ignition we can take approximately right and uh, T ignition is can be approximated as 0 0.75 T f plus 0 0.25 T u. So, temperature gradient at the flame surface will be we know the T ignition is nothing but your 3 by 4 m dot double dash C p divided by k z T f minus T u. This already we have seen right. So, if I say this is uh, equation 1, what I will do? I will basically substitute these values like flame thickness. So, flame thickness I can write down this as delta L T f minus T u divided by 3 by 4 m dot C p by k g T f minus T u. So, this you can cancel it out and you can write down basically this is 4 by 3 right k g by C p and m dot uh, double dash is nothing but your rho u s l right and this I can consider this as alpha this is nothing but your 4 by 3 alpha divided by s l. So, I can write down this s equal to 4 by 3 alpha by s l and uh, this is alpha is basically thermal diffusivity k g and this is evaluated as average temperature rho u evaluated at uh, T u right on I can write down at evaluated as T u and um, C p is evaluated as 
So, uh, what it indicates? It indicates that flame thickness will be inversely proportional to S L burning velocity. The burning velocity will be higher, the flame will be thinner and burning velocity will be lower, the flame thickness will be thicker. right? And this uh, flame thickness will be order of mm kind of things. And uh, if equivalence ratio is uh, 1 for a hydrocarbon air flame, right? the burning velocity will be what? maximum you can get, but when you will go for the lean side and the re side you will find the burning velocity is decreasing. That means, flame become thicker towards the either the reach mixture or the reach mix, lean mixture or the reach mixture. Right. So, uh, this kind of things will be helpful because uh, the flame thickness is basically uh, depend on the uh, burning velocities right we will be looking at little later on that uh, the other things like your quenching diameter and the ignition energy all can be related to the burning velocities uh, so therefore the burning velocity is very very important parameter in case of laminar uh, premix flame so uh, if you look at if it is uh, delta will be uh, decreasing when S L delta L uh, basically will decreases when S L uh, increases and vice versa because it is inversely proportional to the uh, because the flame thickness is inversely proportional to the burning velocity. Now, uh, we will be looking at how to measure the burning <coughs> laminar burning velocity. There are various methods available in the open literature. However, we will be looking at some of them. And these uh, measurement methods uh, for burning velocity can be broadly divided into two categories. One is the uh, propagation method or when the flame will be moving at certain velocities. Other is the stationary method like where the flame has to stabilize and then you measure the burning velocity. And uh, in the propagation method, the flame front will be moving with respect to laboratory co coordinate system, which is basically fixed coordinate system. And um, there are three of them we, which we will be discussing. One is tube method, the combustion uh, bomb method, and the soap uh, bubble method. Right. <coughs> and stationary method there will be uh, also uh, two of them like Bunsen burner and the flat flame burner. Right. There will be several other things also. Um, and in this case also flame front is fixed to the with respect to laboratory frame. So, uh, but question arises all this in the case of propagation method and also in the stationary method you will have to identify the flame surface. Right. For that uh, three methods are being used, one is uh, luminous photography which we directly take and then because of color you will get a uh, shape of the flame photograph. Other is shadowgraph where uh, you will be uh, using some uh, technique uh, shadowgraph which you might have used in your fluid mechanics and slain photography. And, uh, if you look at uh, this, if I take this a flame thickness, slain zone will be in this region in the initial with respect to basically if you consider this is T u and this is T f and shadowgraph in between uh, right and whereas, the luminous zone in the higher temperature zone where uh, the luminous photograph will be coming. So, a luminous uh, part occurs at the burn side as I told and uh, flame speed with respect to unburned gas is required. So, therefore, some correction has to be done because always we uh, define the burning velocity with respect to the unburned mixture the, because this is your unburned mixture right and this is burnt site. And shadow graph correspond to second derivative of the density because if it change temperature is changing, so also the density will be changing. So, uh, closer to the inflection point like somewhere here right. 
so where the slope will be changing changing <coughs> and see then uh, capture the maximum fast density of the gradient and closer to the unburned mixture therefore it is uh, more preferred because you need not to do any correction it is just basically uh, with respect to the unburned uh, mixture and which is according to the definition of the burning uh, laminar burning velocity. But however, uh, for the optical systems and other things are very uh, you know uh, cumbersome in case of slain people generally go for the luminous kind of things easy because it is easier to do that and also it uh, captures the flame because flame will be not in this region because no reaction will be taken this is coming under preheat zone slain one right. So, therefore, that is a, a confusion, but generally people go for luminous uh, images more and uh, some people go for silane also. Let us look at a tube method, what you can do, tube uh, it is a horizontal tube which uh, you fill with the uh, fuel oxidizer mixture to start with and then of course, there is a uh, some kind of a nozzle you can say through which the um, you know mixture can move when the flame front is moving right. So, uh, when you ignite the there will be a kernel right a small one will be coming then it will be growing it will be moving in the direction after that it takes some certain shapes right and uh, this need not to be one dimensional basically it is a two dimensional why because of uh, there will be some buoyancy effect as a result the flame takes a different shape. And uh, and this was uh, basically developed by Mallard and Lee Chatelier in 1883, and they have also given the thermal theory, which uh, we have already discussed that, but it is little modified version than the uh, Mallard and Lee Chatelier. Later on, it was modified that we have discussed for finding out expression for laminar burning velocity. So, what you have to do basically combustible mixture is filled in the tube and on ignition at one end flame propagates through the tube and uh, keep in mind that uh, you know the diameter this if you look at this is the diameter this diameter should be greater than the quenching diameter you might be asking a question what do you mean by quenching as the name indicates that if the diameter is small then heat losses will be very high. If heat losses is higher than the heat release then flame will be quenched it will not propagate. So, uh, that diameter uh, inner diameter should be greater than quenching diameter generally uh, what happened around 50 mm uh, diameter is being used because if it will be too big then what will happen buoyancy effect will be much higher because even though horizontally some of the gases will be having higher uh, lower density then it will go up and the flame will be distorted. So, uh, that also has to be taken care and the flame is planar at the beginning and curved towards downstream due to the buoyancy effect as I dis, uh, have already discussed. So, uh, and uh, if the diameter is uh, larger then the natural convection disturb the flame, planar flame front due to difference in densities of the mixture right. And uh, of course, the friction at the tube will also reason for uh, something parabolic shape uh, that is another reason because there will be uh, some heat losses and also the friction between both the wall, uh, actually wall of the tubes. So, um, that will make the uh, uh, shape of the flame to be parabolic. The burning velocity you can write down basically S L is equal to V F minus V G right V F is this one flame front movement and V G will be some gas will be going out because of the flame front then there will be some expansion of gas expansion will be trying to push some gas out and this is uh, V f is the frame front velocity and V is the unburned gas velocity through this which will be coming. A t is the cross sectional area of tube. So, if you look at 
this is your uh, AT. and AF is the flame surface area, if you look at this area will be uh, flame surface area, right. And this area which you will be getting from the flame photograph, right. Basically that you will be measuring rest and also VF you can measure by locating the flame and then uh, you know uh, taking with respect to time then you can find out what is the L and then how much it has moved. So, V f you can find out this is from the experiment you will have to find out this and this is already known to you and V g you will be also estimating like how much gas is going out that is little difficult to evaluate right. Uh, what you can do you can also put some balloon and see that how much it is going out this measurement of V g is not that easy and some times you can neglect that also and then uh, approximately you can measure. So, therefore, if you know this uh, V f and V g a t of course, it known already because you have taken the proper tube. So, you can estimate the burning velocity uh, by this method laminar burning velocity of flame. And uh, this is not a very accurate method because there is a lot of involvement, but it is the simplest method one can think of. So, therefore, it is being used to the uh, to estimate the uh, you know laminar burning velocity. And this is uh, as I told like uh, this is basically there will be heat losses from uh, the wall right, there will be some heat losses it is some finite values right. And uh, also the buoyancy effect will be there which is not taken care in this uh, formula uh, or expression. So, uh, therefore, uh, one has to be uh, very careful about this measurement system. So, how to overcome this problem, but you can use a vertical tube instead of that right. When you use a vertical tube. Uh, then uh, particularly the buoyancy effect won't be that it won't disturb the flame, right? And it can be uh, flame can propagate upward and flame can propagate downwards, right? So that also, if it is flame is propagating downward, then buoyancy effect will be coming. And when you propagate, you need not to really worry because hot gas is already there. So that has to be taken care. And then the combustion bump which is being used like you can have a uh, chamber uh, you know combustion bump where uh, you can uh, mix this uh, fuel air and then ignite at the center. And in this uh, generally the flame kernel will be coming right if it is ignition and then flame front will be moving. Keep in mind that if the chamber is large again buoyancy effect will be coming into picture right. But, uh, however, if it is a small then the, the, the flame front will be suffering the curvature effect because of curve it is not really one dimensional also right. And uh, some strain will be experiencing and the strain rate has to be looked at it that is also an error. So, generally when it is a larger you know like you, the strain effect will be reduced. So, you can uh, really measure the uh, burning velocity. And uh, you can use a cylinder, you can use a, a spherical bump depending on that what is that. Generally, cylinder is more preferred than the spherical because of a fabrication problem and also the strain rate in case of cylinder will be low. Uh, so, uh, as I told the combustible mixture is ignited at the center of spherical vessel or a constant volume or a cylindrical right. and flame propagate towards the wall and pressure temperature increases due to adiabatic compression because if the flame will be moving it will be uh, because of hot gas at the center it will be expanding right density being lower. So, it will be compressing towards the uh, wall when the flame front will be moving and if the flame front radius is known then you can find out basically how much 
the flame is moving if I take this as a center this is basically R f and I can track the R f with respect to time and then I will have to look at because the rho b is the at the center this is rho b and rho u will be after the you know flame front kind of thing you can say if I am considering this as a flame then this will be rho u of the mixture and uh, keep in mind that this rho u evaluation is not that easy why because the it will be some heat will be transferred and it is radius and this will be also not ambient temperature when you start the experiment right it will be attaining some values. So, therefore, this is evaluation is a very important point um, and of course, what temperature you will be talking about that also another thing rho b, rho b generally people consider to be the corresponding to adiabatic temperature and rho u is the unburned, but it need not to unburn. So, therefore, this b f d r f by d t you can get from the defining the r f with respect to time and you can measure that v f and rho b and rho u are to be evaluated to determine the laminar burning velocity. Uh, as I told that rho b density of gas mixture at burnt state generally you can evaluate at T adiabatic here and this is uh, T u is supposed to be evaluated, but, uh, but however it need not to be T u it may be little higher than the unburnt temperature. So, assumption what is being made here that effect of flame front thickness and curvature are negligibly small which is the assumption in this e equation right. And uh, curvature effect uh, is uh, negligibly small in this case and pressure at any instant is uniform throughout the vessel that is again assumption being made. No heat loss including radiation which is not real the case, but it should be particularly when the flame front will be moving towards the wall heat loss will be definitely there, but when the flame front uh, in the middle of the uh, this thing then you can say ok flame is far away heat loss will be uh, not that much and then generally flame will be moving at certain velocity. So, therefore, it is a very fast process than the whatever heat loss could occur <laughs> and chemical equilibrium achieved. Uh, behind the flame which need not to be the case because this is a very fast process right. Uh, these are the assumptions being made for this. So, a soap bubble what is being done uh, basically this is the soap bubble right. This is the fuel plus air mixture in a soap bubble. And if you look at his igniter, this unburned mixtures, and at the time t when you ignite certain time the flame will be moving in front and towards that, and then you will have to track this flame and look at it. So, uh, this is uh, you can assume it to be spherical flame front and this is the of course, the when flame will move it may go little expand also. So, bubble surface instant air flame surface. So, uh, homogeneous fuel air mixture is confined in a soap bubble on ignition at the center spherical flame propagates and pressure of burnt gas remains constant as the flame propagates. Assuming flame to be spherical and pressure remaining constant mass flux you can say S L is equal to A rho u v f into a and this a is cancel it out. So, you will get basically S l is equal to v f rho b by rho u and v f you can evaluate basically in the similar way this is your r f and v f is nothing but d r f by d t. You will track that values and then find out. So, uh, this method cannot be used for dry mixtures because when you are using soap bubble there will be some kind of a uh, water coming into pictures because you will be putting into that. And a flame front may not retain the spherical shape and flame front would not be smooth for the fast flames right. And heat loss to the electron and ambient environment also incur error right. 
So, um, this is the thing and with this we will stop over here. In the next lecture, we will be take, uh, discussing about more methods how to evaluate the laminar burning velocity. Thank you very much.